that's where we are. You'll see us, uh, the ELO is in Canada. Uh, Vance Nelson and uh, I have sort of done a lot of thinking about this area. There it is. You'll see British Columbia, a famous area right on the border of British Columbia and Alberta, uh, now basically off links for collecting except for visiting. There's Vance. Vance is sort of nowhere near as old as the fossils, uh, but he's been in this business a long time, a very knowledgeable young man, and made some great books available, um, you know, dealing with dinosaurs and all of his research. There's the Burgess Shale. Uh, there's a friend of mine who was there many years ago before it was as famous as it is now. And you can actually see the shaley layers, some a little twisted. You can see fossils, soft-bodied fossils, um, sort of trilobite ish like, uh, but a bit mysterious, which is what made this area rather famous. There's also some that are hard-bodied hard -bodied, like limpets. No, that's not my famous thumb. That's Vance's thumb becoming famous for a change. Limpets. And when you ask the guide, but aren't limpets still here? Yes, they are. And this is a mystery to them that some of the creatures seem to have died out or else we haven't found them alive yet, that many of the hard-bodied ones like the limpets haven't evolved one bit. There's some interesting sea pens. Yes, sea pens are still here. Picture on the right-hand side, fossil one on the left. So as famous as the Burgess Shale is at the boundary of the Cambrian area, it's got a lot of fossils that haven't changed one bit. And some fossils, yes, it is an explosion, it would appear, if you believe life has gained from nothing to somewhere, and it shows up particularly here in the Burgess Shales. But from then till now, even if you thought it was hundreds of millions of years old, do you recognise this creature? Perhaps not, but they are actually still here this sort of tag on to one creature, some of them are very recognisable. Oh, you see, I know that because the creature at the bottom lives in Australia. That's a little predipitous or velvet worm. You see, when you come to Australia and you have a look at the creatures living in my backyard or down by the ocean, you find similar sort of creatures. No hard bodies, but they're still here. Now, the Burgess Shale is fantastic. It's got some weird creatures here. What's that? A squashed prawn? Is it an arthropod? What is it? Look at those mysterious looking eyes. Uh, there are some fabulous displays. I went to the British Museum one year and they had a fabulous display of all the uh, Burgess Shale creatures. Great to be able to take pictures of them. Yes, sometimes you pay quite a small fortune to the British Natural History Museum, but it's really worth the effort. But what was interesting was one of the guidebooks on the Burgess Shale. The animals were dumped at a variety of angles to the bedding. Oh, yes, even though they're so soft, you see some of them actually cross the bedding. They're polystrate. They're soft. But the bedding and the animal has come in at the same time. The bedding didn't get trapped and then the, the top bit of layer washed over and eroded away. Look at that. The arthropod selenia, the one I've been showing you, for example, ended up enclosed in the mud, standing on their heads. Now, when was the last time you saw a soft-bodied creature standing upside down, waiting to be slowly buried, and the creature was 15 centimetres long? No, no, no. Don't be surprised. Even the experts have to regard this as a rapid dump. So the rocks, which contain strange fossils, contain many fossils that are familiar, are all rapidly dumped. It's a fossil dump area. It didn't take millions of years. Well, back to Vance, because he made a very interesting observation on the trip. The shales formed rapidly. The fossils tell you that. Ask the guides if you're there. You have to sort of uh, fork out some dosh and time to get there. But here's Vance's summary. At the Walcott Quarry, in the quarry itself, the fossils are listed as 505 million years old. You know, just on the boundary of the Cambrian area. But that's not the only date at the place. That's the date in the quarry. If you go to the visitor centre, just a little bit back, you notice the same fossils are dated at 515 million years old when Vance was visiting there. You hope they listen to the creationists and they take notice of some of the silly faux pas because you know what else you spot? Outside the visitor centre, the same fossils are dated at 530 million years old. In the quarry, 505 million years old, Outside the visitor centre, 
530 million years old. Do you know Vance's comment? I didn't realise I was walking so slowly. That's how <laughs> silly it actually gets. So when you look at the dates of these fossils, remember these are dates that are made up. They are made up based on how old you think the rock is. The rock is actually in the end dated according to the fossils, and I don't withdraw that one bit. You will find that that is how it is done, and if you get a radioactive date that disagrees with the orthodox dating of the rock based on the fossils, they will throw out the radioactive date. I kid you not. Hmm. If you want to actually go to Alberta, go and have a look at this. Uh, but if you want to get a specimen and get it dated, I'll give you a little trick. You see, when you go to these places, uh, yes, I've walked basically from one side of that to the other. Uh, only once in the snow as we were looking for fossils and dinosaurs. But very often as we were going through, yep, you can see the, the shale sands over there. I've walked all the way through that shale, all sands, got permission. It was great. Looking at the fossils that preserved there, there's even a big plesiosaur in there. And right on the left-hand side where you bump into the metamorphics and on the right-hand side where the Precambrian shield shows up. You can walk right through the geologic column for all practical purposes. But if you ask how long it took, base it on the fossils, base it on the distance, the deepest part of that rock is three kilometres thick. And it supposedly took 600 million years to form. Do your math. See how sensible it is. 300 million millimetres. That's the distance. Took 600 million years. Oh, sorry, 3 million millimetres. Took 600 million years to form. Now, it doesn't take too much math. If you can't do the math, use a calculator. That's roughly one two hundredth of a millimetre per year. And in these rocks, you have 15 centimetre tall vertical rocks, polystrate, sorry, polystrate fossils standing upright on their heads. It's not going to happen because in reality, four to five thousand years, it would take to cover your big toe. And you ain't going to stand there for four to five thousand years waiting to be slowly buried. So can I encourage you, the minute you do the tax trick and try to do double entry bookkeeping on any rock deposit in the world, you will discover that Derek Ager was right. There's Alberta, verging into Saskatchewan. See all the white bits? They're the bits that are missing. Here's Derek Ager again, a good place to finish the day. There's his book, The New Catastrophism. We are always faced with a contradiction and stress it. I mean, nicely, shove it up their pipe and tell them to smoke it. We are always faced with a contradiction between the rates of deposition. If you believe the time, you'll have no fossils. If you believe the fossils, you'll have no time. We are faced with a contradiction between the rates of deposition and the known thickness of rock for a particular geological kind. You've been lied to.